Hello, welcome to Algebra 2. Go ahead and open your books to lesson uh, 71, page 506. We are learning a new trig lesson. This all pertains to finding angles inside when you're not dealing with the usual, I'm gonna put lower volume, when you're not dealing with the usual right triangle. There's a certain method that you have to use when you're solving for the sides and the angles. So you can't always rely on the a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So I have that crossed out. Hopefully you can have that in your brain saying, I can't use that for this lesson and for the homework. All right, first thing here, we're gonna solve finding the area of the triangle. So here, sometimes we can't find the height of a right triangle. So what we use is a squared Pythagorean theorem, basically. Here we can't. We have to use a different method. We have to use a different equation. And these are equations that you'll have in front of you. So it's not something that you can memorize. You could memorize it, it'll help you a lot. Here we have a triangle. Let's say we're trying to find the area, right? You need the base and you need the height of it. So the height is not there. You have to draw it out yourself. You have to find what the height is because they will tell you what the height is. You have to find it on your own. To find the height, let's say right here, we're gonna have to do the sine, so the opposite side from there. So the sine of A is equal to, so if we just look at this triangle here, the sine of A, the sine is always opposite over hypotenuse going back to the Sokotoa. So opposite side is considered H. Um, hypotenuse is considered C. So you're cutting that triangle in half because you're trying to find what that H is. So it's gonna be H over C. But the reason why we did this is we're trying to find what the height is. <coughs> Ugh, corona. Now, to find what the height is, you multiply both sides by C, and then you'll have your hypotenuse times your sine. So that's what you have to look for. Now, going back to finding the area, you have the area is equal to one half times base times your new height. Your new height is now the, um, the hypotenuse times the sine of the opposite, the sine of the angle of the opposite side here. Now let's go ahead and work on some here. Let's see if I can find my marker. Right there. Here, example one, find the area. We have this. We have two sides here. These are the different equations for the area because there are different angles, right? There's three separate angles we can use. Here it says one half times B times CA times one half times A times C of the sine of B. For all of this, you don't have to memorize any of these here. I found a trick to do these type of problems, which is one half times the included side of the angle. If we look over here, we don't have A, we don't have B, C, we don't have different angles here. We're focusing on this right here. We're trying to find the area of it. That means there's gonna be an invisible line or between here for the height. Here, to find it is we multiply one half times the included side. The included side is where those two sides meet at that angle. And that's the two sides right here. So that's 24 times 55. So it's one half times one included side, the other included side, times the sine of that angle. So the sine of 115 degrees. And that's what I have here. One half times 24 times 55 times sine of 115. Then after that, you just multiply. Here, if you multiply all these three numbers together, you get 660 times sine of 115. Multiply those two. Keep in mind your calculator should be in degree form. We were going back and forth with degree and radians. So here, degree, make sure it's in that format. Multiply it together and you get 598.2. If they ask you to round a specific um, place value, make sure you do so. For your homework, make sure you're just putting in the number. Don't worry about the inches, feet, meters, etc. The most important part of this lesson is finding the missing side. So we don't have a missing side or we don't have a side. We have to use the law of sines to do that. That means the sine of a certain angle over the opposite side is equal to the sine of another angle over the opposite side of sine of B, and then the sine of C over the opposite side. Here, example two, they want us to find what B is. Can't use Pythagorean theorem. We have to go ahead and just use what we know. Here, we can use the law of sine. These, go, these interchange, so you can use sine of A times sine of C, sine of B, and sine of C. You set them equal to each other. So here, we have, I'm gonna go ahead and erase all this. We have here two angles here. We could find the missing angle here, but we're not gonna focus on that because we are trying to focus on the angle 
that has a number for the opposite side or has an opposite side. If you look at A, it's 48 degrees. The opposite side is four. So that means for our fractions, we can create one. So the sine of 48 is equal, or sorry, sine of 48 is over the opposite side, which is four. You set that equal to another angle. What we're trying to look for is B. It looks like here the opposite angle to that is 35 degrees. Or if you look at 35 degrees, the opposite side is B. So then you're going to create a fraction. Another one. So the sine of the angle, sine of 35, over the opposite side, which is considered B. We're not using C because there's nothing up here. There's no side here. For us to use any of these signs, we need to, we need to use at least um, one of the angles that has an angle and it has a side right across from it. So this one has an angle and a side, that's perfect. This one has an angle, it doesn't have a side, but it has one of the two. C doesn't have anything for me, and I'm not looking for anything where C is. Now here, from this point, all you do is cross multiply. So we have B of sine of 48 is equal to four times the sine of 35. You're gonna be using your calculator a lot for this lesson. When we multiply across, I'm trying to get the B by itself, that means I'm going to divide both sides by the sine of 48. You could find what this is and then divide it. There's so many different ways to do this. So now four times sine of 35, find what that is, which is, I have 2.29. Sine of 48 is 0 0.74. So if you go ahead and divide those two, you end up with 3.1 and that's your answer there. B, solve this triangle we don't have what p m and the angle n is what we're going to do first is we're going to find the angle i feel like the angle is always the easiest way to find it going back to geometry we understand that if you have three angles in there all those three angles equal 180. we know that one is 65 we know the other one is 74. we don't have anything for n but we know all of this equals 180. and when we find that we add and subtract that we end up with 41 degrees. So now here, N, the measure of angle N is equal to 41 degrees. Now we're gonna find P and M. To find P and M, you go ahead and use the law of sine. It looks like here, we could use M, so 65 over M. If we look at P, we could use P, 74 over P, but if we use both of those, we'll have two unknowns. We need to make sure, whenever you're making proportions, you always need to make sure that one of them only has an unknown. There's only one unknown. You can't have an X and a Y in the same equation and solve for both. You have to solve for only one at a time. So here, it looks like you can solve for this, and let's go ahead and find out. So I can solve for this, I can use the measure of angle N. So the sine of N, which is 41, over the opposite side, which is 14, is equal to, in this case we're trying to find M, so I'm gonna use these two here. That means the measure, the sine of the measure of M, which is 65, over the opposite side, which is M. There's only one unknown, which is that M. That's what you really want. You can't, there, that's why for proportions, you have to be careful what you use, what numbers you use. But the key thing is one number. Now, cross multiply. M times sine of 41, is equal to 14 times the sine of 65. Here, to get m by itself, you divide both sides by the sine of 41. m, so 14 times the sine of 65, divided by the sine of 41, you end up with 19.3. And that's it for the first one. Next one, p. Find p. So now here, we could go back and say that m is equal to 19.3. We could use M, or we can just stick with what we had from the beginning. I stuck with the sine of 41 over 14. We already had what those two numbers are. They both have an angle and number. We don't have to make it more complicated by using the other one. Here, we're trying to find P, and according to this, to find P, we do the sine of 74 over the opposite side, which is just lowercase p. So numerator is angles, denominator is the sides. We cross multiply. 14 times sine of 74 is equal to P times the sine of 41 to get P by itself. Uh, divide both sides by a sine of 41. And 
14 times sine of 74 divided by sine of 41, you end up with, what do you end up with? 20.5. And that's all for your answer. There's going to be a second video because the lesson's a little bit long.